Thank you very much for staying here with us on Prime. And of course, it's time for sport and a big dose of, of that. And of course, we're going to go into our major stories. The Black Starlets of Ghana are in focus. I'm talking about the national under-17 uh, men's football team. Now, FA president Kweto Kriku has uh, been speaking about the Black Starlets. Now, according to him, the Black Starlets have a bright future uh, despite Ghana's inability to book a place in next year's Africa Under-17 Cup of Nations after suffering a loss to Burkina Faso in the Wafu Zone B tournament in Cape Coast. Now, this is the sixth time since 2001 that the Starlets missed out on the Continental uh, Tournament. But Kurt Okriku believes that the team has what it takes to move forward into the future. Well, this is not the end of the journey. Those are the words of FA President Kurt Okriku. And of course, I do remember back then when I was in my formative years in the early 90s when we saw many great uh, players, uh, those who infiltrated the Black Stars and eventually uh, made some inroads as well as uh, brought uh, the nation a lot of joy. Well, let's now throw the focus on the recent record of the Black Starlets. So right there, um, you know, back in 2001, which was almost uh, some, what, 20 years ago? 21 years ago. Yes, so this is the record. Now, in 2001, the Black Starlets did not qualify for the Under-17 Africa Cup of Nations. Now, in 2003, a similar uh, disaster befell the team. In 2005, they made it into the competition and finished runners-up. In 2007, they finished in third place. And then the calamity struck again back in 2009. And do remember that back in the year 2009, Ghana had qualified and played in the African you know, Youth Championship at the under-20 level and had won it in Rwanda and gone ahead to win the World Cup in Egypt for the very first time for Ghana and for Africa. Now, in 2011, the team did not qualify again. Now, in 2013, Ghana got to the group stage and in 2015, Ghana got disqualified. In 2017, um, the under-17 team, the Black Starlets, had a better story to tell and they made it uh, to the final and uh, eventually missed by a whisker, becoming runners-up from that competition. And then we went back to the syndrome of not qualifying for the under-17 AFCON. 2019, no qualification, and recently from the Cape Coast Stadium, where Ghana hosted the uh, you know, under-17 Wafu Zone B tournament, Ghana did not qualify again. So this has been the trajectory since you know, Ghana uh, you know, uh, started competing from 2001. Of course, back in the, um, you know, late 90s into the mid and early 90s, it was a, a better story to tell. Of course, Ghana made its biggest achievements on the world stage in the 90s. Back in 1991, under coach Otto Fista, and in 1995, under the late coach Ade, who uh, uh, introduced the brand of, you know, of um, multi-system Football. So we'll be doing some more in terms of the conversations on this particular subject. Um, we've been trying to reach uh, the legendary Ni Odate Lamte, who at a point was the uh, best player, uh, best juvenile player all over the world back in the year 2000 and, sorry, back in the year 1991, in the early 90s. So we'll be uh, making attempts to reach him so that we can get his perspective to the story as well. But let's throw the focus on the recent qualification tickets that were secured by some Division One clubs for the Ghana Premier League. Now, back there in Inswatre is Inswatre Man Football Club. Now, they achieved a historic feat after beating Tamale City with a 2-1 scoreline to earn promotion to the Ghana Premier League. That game was played yesterday at the Accra Stadium. Now, they joined Samatex and Kotoku Royals in the Ghana top flight. Now, we've been joined by two officials of Enswatraman FC. Boniface Ayipa is the head coach, while Kofi Joel Jempe is the public relations officer. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. You're coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Mm. Look, um, the Buno area definitely is a place of thick concentration of football clubs. The Buno area in Ghana carries the biggest numbers in terms of, you know, uh, the presence of football clubs at all tiers and all levels. Um, what drove this journey and what was the driving force as you went along? Because we all do know that Division One is a very tough terrain. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, the journey started last season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When uh, the current owners of the club 
came uh, to buy the club from the former owners. So they set an agenda for themselves um, that at the end of the season, we should do our best to keep the, the team in the Division One League and not to go on relegation. And we did just that, even though at the end uh, of the season, along the line, our points were deducted for field and un unqualified player. It was rather unfortunate, but we still did our best and kept the team in the division. And then we started to plan for this season that uh, we need to qualify for the premiership mm. next season. Interesting. That's exactly what mm. happened. Interesting stuff there. Yeah. Let me let me come to you. You know, um, Kofi, the, the the job of a PRO for a Division One club has a completely different look and feel, where um, you know you have demanding fans, just like every other club at every level. But then, you know, the fanatism levels are shown in different forms at, at that level. How have you handled your job, being a link between the club and the fans? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, so it's been a, a difficult task. Oh. And at the moment when I was appointed as a public relations officer for the club, uh, it's not been only for uh, being the public relations officer, but also the brand's manager. Oh. So I needed to start with the social media to convey people both uh, close and near and also home and abroad. And that was where I started from. You see, we keep saying Bruno Hafo is the heart of Ghana football because we've produced so many talented footballers for the national team and for that matter, uh, the domestic league, which happens to be the Ghana Premier League. It's not been easy. And we have very passionate supporters when yeah. you go to Bruno Hafo. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you were at the stadium yesterday and... I know your reporters were there and they gave you whatever happened. Look, we came with about 14 buses from uh, Brown Hafo just to support this team. Wow. Good. So, and it was all due to the work I did oh. in mobilizing them. And you see, there is a modern trend of uh, maybe convening our supporters and communicating to them. Initially, Brown Hafo was tagged as uh, it's in a place where hooliganism is noted for when it comes to our games. But for now, we hardly hear some of these things. And it's all due to uh, the public education some of us did, just to let them know that there's a new way of supporting. And also, we have to give our best to promote uh, the club to get to where we are now, and also to go higher than mm. I think uh, we have in our vision. Very well. Uh, congratulations on, on, on achieving that. Let's also talk about the, the level of, of engagement. And, you know, you, you've, you've already spelt out the kind of sacrifice that fans are prepared to make. Now, uh, traveling from Sunyani, by the way, uh, towards Accra is a minimum of uh, a five-hour journey, depending on the number of stops, or probably even well, six hours if you, yeah, if sure, you can. About sure, six hours, yeah, sure. by drive. And so these fans had to make stops, they had to freshen up a little bit and get to the stadium. Massive sacrifice, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Mm. It is. Uh, I would say they used about eight hours to get here. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember the day, we, the team came on Friday. Mm. Good. So we left uh, Sunyani around 4 a.m. We got here around 11. So look at the, the time difference. It seems about seven to eight yeah, hours. Exactly. Wow. Good. But you see, they, they were in for everything. Because of the education we gave to them, I feel like, look, there are so many economic factors when you have a team qualified to the Ghana Premier League. And one thing our club president told us is the vision of the club. Mm. And that, I want to set up a club that will compete with Ali, work of Morocco, and compete with the likes of Liverpool, Real Madrid. And look, his case is this. We need to compete keenly in the CAF Champions League. We need to win CAF Champions League trophies and go on to play in the Club World Cup competitions. Wow. Good. Big, big dreams indeed. I mean, uh, but, but you'd have to definitely take this step by step. Sure. Coach, yes. you have the material that can make you get into the Ghana Premier League and establish, you know, a stay, first of all. 
before thinking about the top four and eventually maybe winning the league? Yeah, like he said yesterday, if you were in the uh, stadium. Grassport Stadium, I think you have seen the quality that uh, the players uh, exhibited. Mm. Yeah, and uh, so um, as for the material, we have the material. And uh, fortunately enough, we have a sister club, the Buffalo Soccer Academy, mm. that also have excellent young, talented players mm. that will draft into the, the premiership team now. Mm. Yeah, that will help us. At least um, you cannot always be selfish. So you will definitely go out there mm. and then look for more, much more experienced players and mm. come and augment the team. Definitely. Yeah. Now on the screen is the... Uh, the, 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 the home ground, uh, you know, of, of the club, of Inswatreman, that's the club's bus, uh, two buses actually, yeah. uh, the gym that we're just seeing, and what I believe is the clubhouse. Yeah. Okay, now, um, I also realized that stands are being refurbished, sure. you know, the stands are being refurbished, and uh, they're trying very hard to create an inner perimeter as well, yeah. which is a very major requirement for uh, the Ghana Premier League. Now, you've talked about material. Let's come to you, Coach. Yeah. Um, you have a CAF License B. Yes, please. And within the Ghana Premier League's rules now, uh, because of club licensing, you'd require a CAF License A, yeah. meaning that you'd have to take a little step aside. Have you prepared yourself psychology for that? Because obviously you did a lot of hard work, you know, in, in, the, in the tough terrain, yeah. and now... When it's time to enjoy the golden roses, you'd have to step back. <laughs> yeah, naturally, I don't think it's a problem. Mm. I, I, I already know about that. Mm. And so um, all that was required is to qualify the team. And that's exactly what I did. Um, any other person who comes and I'm around, I will give him my utmost support and support him 100% and will achieve. Interesting you mentioned that, but... Um, personally as well, what is the ambition? Is this something you'd want to pursue as a matter of urgency? Because obviously these players have also built a certain relationship with you. Naturally, mm. yes. Um, well, that is not up to me mm. because it's up to CAF. Because if CAF organizes the, uh, the course today, I would definitely uh, go in for the A license. But that is not up to me. I cannot go in uh, for the license myself but I will have to wait for them to organize the, the, the course so that I can go. But I, I, I learned they will do so soon. Mm. Because uh, since I obtained the B license in 2015, I think the following year they organized one that I wasn't qualified to be part of. Mm. So I was waiting. Up, but since then, up to this day, they've not organized any calf license course again. Mm. And that's the reason why I'm still holding the B. Coach, um, realistically, yes. realistically, yes. what will be the projection performance-wise for Inswatreman FC in the Ghana Premier League? Looking at the kind of competition you'd be facing in, you know, in the Ghana Premier League, what will be the realistic projection? Well, realistically, I think uh, if we do our homework well, I think we can come up to the mid-table for the first season. Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, if possible, we can go up to the top four. That is, if we do our homework well. Okay. Yeah. So the first part of call will be mid-table. Mid -table, yes. So if you do a mid-table finish for next season, you should be fine. Yeah, naturally. And then if you do better than that, then it will be a plus. Exactly. Okay. Let's look at, uh, you know, the areas of, of other areas of, of revenue. Because obviously this stadium cannot draw in the kinds of numbers. I mean, you're always going to have you know, uh, overflows because the stands obviously are not enough. Sure. Now, what is the plan, you know, to, to bring in multiple streams of revenue? Uh, merchandising is one thing that uh, clubs are gradually, gradually settling in on. Is this something you're considering? And are you doing anything along those lines? Sure. Uh, you know, I started by saying... I'm not just a public relations officer. Mm. And, and that's the reason I'm asking good, that good. <laughs> <laughs> The brand's manager too. Exactly. So I need to brand the club up to a level that will attract uh, sponsors or maybe the corporate body mm. to bring in their sponsorship. And as I said, I started by creating social media accounts because actually when I came in as the public relations officer, I remember, I remember the club didn't have any social media account, mm. or maybe if even uh, they had, it wasn't vibrant and active. Yeah. But then 
you can just visit our social media accounts, either on Twitter or Facebook, and you get information about us. We are also creating a website for the team or the club, I should say. And you see, that is where I thought maybe we should start from so that the corporate body will feel like, oh, when you go to social media, they are even vibrant and the followers they have. You see, now the corporate body also look at maybe it's a give and take affair. If we give in, what are we getting out from the club? Now we have the numbers. We are, we are getting more. And more especially after getting the qualification to Ghana Premier League yesterday, we realize the numbers are multiplying on our social media accounts. And, uh, and on other issues too, I would say we are speaking to other companies to uh, how we can bring them in to come and sponsor us. So it's our main focus for now. But you see, one thing I keep saying is about facilities. It's about investment. What will attract the corporate body to invest in the this and aside seeing the numbers we have behind us and as i said if you were there at the sports stadium yesterday you could see the numbers mm. Mm. that was there to support the strachman football club and mm. look bringing 14 buses yeah good and report tells us that look even if we were able to add extra 14 maybe they couldn't have passed the numbers that couldn't join Good. So it tells you the numbers we have behind us. Mm. And aside that, now let's look at this. Good. Let's look at uh, the other side of it. So we have the facilities. We are talking about a club that has a clubhouse housing the players there. We have offices up for our management members and also the coaches. Look, we have uh You came in prepared. Pool. Good. You came in prepared. We even prepared before we came in. <laughs> We've been prepared before we came in <laughs> to compete for this qualification. So we have a swimming pool. There's a gym center. Yeah. We you know, the area of view, the area of yeah. view, I must admit, I mean, even at this stage is very, uh, you know, it's very, it's very appealing, sure. you know, for starters. I mean, this is, this is impressive. And, yeah. uh, you know, you can, you can do a head count of the number of Ghana Premier League clubs who have <laughs> facilities that are this, uh, you know, are converged, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, look, Kofi, thank you so much. Coach, uh, thank you so much. And all the best with the endeavors and getting, you know, some more licenses added to sure, sure, what you sure, want sure. to do. And so uh, let's just quickly check out the Twitter page. They may just end up getting a few more followers. Okay. There it is, in Swatreman FC. Um, it's at in Swatreman FC on Twitter. And hey, the big, big, uh, you know, banner is right there. Uh, the big poster is right there. They are champions of uh, Ghana Division One League Zone One. All right, congratulations, congratulations, Coach Boniface Aipa. Thank once you again, much. Kofi, thank you so so much. It's thank been wonderful you. having you, and we're looking forward to seeing your exploits in the Ghana Premier League. Thank that you so much. Yes. All right, all right. So, figure uh, we we're just discussing this uh, off air. Uh, the figure for Sadio Mane. Well, look, um, it could have been way way bigger. It should have been way way bigger. That guy is a big deal, and I know there'll be conversations, uh, you know, in your homes in the offices tomorrow morning and everywhere, on social media. Let's get talking about this. African players are too undervalued. We'll talk about that tomorrow when I bring you sport here on Prime. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, get on our sports page of myjoyonline.com and also our social media handles. My name is Nathaniel Atta and I have love for sport.